Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be back at Kettle Creek. It's been a while and see new faces. And I'm going to say this. I'm, when I say it, I don't mean no, nothing, disrespect old faces. <laughs> but people had not seen in a while. And I'm going to say, I'm going to put a plug in for Sunday school because I came to Sunday school this morning. And I got to sit under someone that sat under me when I was here, and I was blessed. She had a lesson that goes along with what I'm going to minister with. And I want to tell her, so everybody will know, you did a great job, Stephanie. And if you're missing, if you're not in Sunday school, I'm going to say come and be in part of Sunday school. And if you're her age or her class, come be in her class because you will be totally blessed. And I'm going to say this, I thought I wasn't, but you remember what you said in, Sunday, in class about when you saw me in there, you said sometimes when someone's in a room, you wonder if you, well, that's happening to me right now. That's because Brother Ed is here, and he's my, he is my spiritual mentor. He has been for many years, and it, it, it's an honor for me to be able to preach because I know I, he's helped me in all my work in the, in the Lord because he was there when we went to the mission field and, and come back, and he's always been there. And I always have a special place for Danny Callahan. He is a pastor that, when I came here, moved back from Florida. When I pastored there, we moved back to Florida and, and came here. And there will always be a special place in my heart for Danny Callahan. And I can tell you this, when he hurts, I hurt. And when he rejoices, I rejoice. And I don't, I'm not just saying it because I'm the special speaker. I mean that. Because Danny and I have a close relationship. We may not talk to each other for a little while, but when we talk, it's like we've never missed a beat anywhere. I will tell you, you have a great pastor in Danny Callahan. Amen. And I listened to, I sang the song, the words that I knew in the, in the songs that were in worship service. And I thought, well, I don't need to preach my message. We don't, we've already heard the message. If you listen to the words of the songs that were sung today, we don't go home or go down to the social home and go ahead and eat. Because it talks about the love and the strength of Jesus Christ needs to be in our life. Amen? Amen. 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 Now that wasn't the message. Let's get to the message. How about that? But God is so good. And I'm glad to see all of you are here today because we were supposed to have been gone yesterday. Did you know that? How many saw the little clip? My phone, I, I, I look at the Google News on my phone. Man predicts world will end September 23rd. I thought, man, that happens. I won't get to come preach at Kettle Creek and have all that good food. Because <laughs> I know what kind of food they serve here. I was here. But he missed it. Aren't you glad? In a way. In a way, but I said him in class this morning, we, we mentioned, I said, he, he revised it yesterday morning. He said, well, no, it's not going to end right now, somewhere in the future. But we know that that's what's going to happen. But I want you to tell you this morning, I'm going to walk a lot. Those of you who don't know me, I walk a lot. I'll be down there before it's over with. So I'm going to tell you now. It's good to know we serve a God who cares about everything that touches us in our life. It does not matter what it is. He is there. In today's world, we're, we're not sure what's going to happen. We have the North Korean missile crisis. He's going to bomb us all. You know, we're all going to be to heaven when he does that. We have the hurricanes that come. Harvey, now we had Irma. Irma was unpredictable. The weathermen couldn't figure out what she was going to do. It go this way, the way it's going to go this way, then it's going to go this way. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to come down here anyway, then I'll preach. I'm going to tell you, I read this, that even though the weathermen had a hard time predicting, I believe it's because of the prayers of the believers. Amen. Because I read this, it said that the path that it finally took through Florida, it killed it. Yeah. And it could have been a lot worse damage than what we received. Yes, there was a lot of damage in things that happened, but it could have been a lot worse. But this, this is from the weather standpoint. They said the path that it took, it began to diminish to the point that it didn't do as much damage as it could have been. Why? I believe it's because of the prayers of the believer. Amen. I believe that. You see, we have uncertainties in our life in this world. We're going to live on this earth before Je till Jesus comes back. We're going to have things that happen to us in our lives. 
that we don't know what to do. Some people call them storms. If you will, look at Mark chapter 4. Very familiar passage, but God put this on my heart and it seemed like, and I was praying, God, is this the word that you want me to share? But it's like every time I turn on the TV for the, since Danny has called me, I saw a, somebody mention something about this passage. Okay, I got it, God, I got it. I get up this morning, I turn the TV on. What is I hear a, a minister down, down in Jacksonville ministering part of this passage. I'm going, I got it, I got it. I, got, I know it. This, this is what God wants me to, sh to share. But I'm glad God does it that way. In Mark chapter 4, in verse 35, the word reads this way, In the same day when evening had come, he said to them, I want you to remember this. I've marked it, I underlined it in my Bible. Jesus said this to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. I want you to look at your neighbor this morning and tell him, let's cross over to the other side. Now I'm going to do what the preacher always says. Now say it like you mean it. Let's cross over to the other side. You see, Jesus right there told them, I Jesus knew that storm was going to come. How many believe that? Jesus knew that storm was coming. That's why, I believe that's why he said, let's cross over to the other side. Because he said, we're going to make it to the other side. I got news for each one of us this morning. We're going to make it to the other side. It doesn't matter what storms come our way. We're going to make it to the other side. I, I'm, going to, I'm going to jump too because I get excited when I start preaching the word of God. Because it's something to be excited about. It's not show what I'm doing. I'm excited because I have the opportunity to share God's word with you so I can grow and you can grow. But Jesus said, let's cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern to sleep on the pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? When he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be here together in one accord in your house. And Lord, I pray that all of our hearts will be open and our minds and our ears to to hear and to receive what you have to say, Father. Lord, take all the words that I want to put in there out, but put what you want to be said in, so that we all can be ministered to. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, the disciples knew Jesus was the Messiah. How many of us just want to know that Jesus is the Messiah? But at this point in their lives, they lacked the understanding of who he was totally. And that's what happens to us when we get into a storm in our life. We forget about who Jesus is and start thinking about us. What am I going to do? How am I going to fix this problem? And I'm speaking from experience. I'm that, I'm that way. When something goes on, I try to figure out how can I fix it? And after I finally wear myself out and realize, hey, I should have went to God first. And let God fix it because he can't. You see, Jesus never changed. We change. We change. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 8, if you will turn there. I, I, I like to make, make you turn there. I like to hear pages turn. Or I'm sorry. Buttons punched, okay? Everybody has a Bible app, most of the people. I have one. Some people are faster than I am on it, so I just leave it alone and go back to this word, 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, the gospel is becoming so watered down today, believers forget how powerful Jesus Christ and the Word of God is. Jesus 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Jesus knows what's going to happen tomorrow, and Jesus is going to be there. Let's look at this situation where they were in the boat, and the storm's coming in. I thought about bringing a bucket, and I forgot to bring it this morning. But they're probably in the beginning of the storm when it starts overwhelming them. They're in that boat trying to bail it out with a bucket. And that's what you and I are doing in our lives. We're trying to bail it out ourselves. And we're not accomplishing anything because the water keeps coming in faster we can dump it out. You ever felt that way or ever been there? So they're dumping it out. Trying to save themselves. I want us to look at something that for two disciples, Peter and John, they understood who Jesus really is. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 8, or verse 1. So I'm just going to do it this way. I'm just going to tell you what happened. It's one of, the, one of the favorite things in the Bible for me. Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, it actually goes 1 through 8. Peter and John approached the temple. And you know this scripture as well as I do. They approached the temple and there's a lame man laying there begging. I say he had a storm in his life. The man had, ne had never been able to work a day in his life. He's trying to make ends meet by begging. But yet Peter and John understood who Jesus Christ was. Once he arose from that grave, he's not in the grave anymore, amen? amen. That was weak. He's not in the grave anymore, is he? That's a little better. But he, Peter and John, understood who he was. And they went up to the lame man and said, Silver and gold, I have none, but what I do have, what they have? Jesus. What do you have? Jesus. Man, I remember this guy was short. He ain't short no more. You got it? Thank you, those. They said, who I do have or who we do have. Wow, he really fixed it. <laughs> you should have done that the first time. <laughs> Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. What did the man do? Well, let me think about it. Let me ponder if that's what I should do. No, that man didn't think about it. He just, Peter just reached his hand down. Come here, Chris. He just reached his hand down, and the man, leap, boy, leap. <laughs> you didn't leap. I better get somebody lighter. <laughs> he leaped up, what the word says. Why? Because of the power of Jesus Christ. When we have a storm in our life, we need to go to Jesus. Jesus is in the boat with the disciples. His presence was there. But their faith was not being exercised because they didn't truly understand who he was or who he is for us today. And that's where we are in this life today, that we need to understand who Jesus is. And this morning, Sunday school, we talked about those same things. If we, we need to get the word of God and get it down into our hearts, into our minds, so we really understand who Jesus Christ is. So when my storm comes along, I'm not going to sit there and waller in it for ever, who knows how long, but I'm going, to, I'm going to rise up and let God take control of it. Did, did I say he's going to take you out of it? No, he may not take you out of it, but he can give you peace in that storm. You see, if somebody's telling you he's going to take you out every time, they lied to you. But he can't give us peace. Jesus Christ stood up to that storm and said, Peace, be still. And I heard someone say, It's like you tell a dog, Shut, shut up, sit down. I'm not the ordinary preacher, okay? But he said, Shh. How many times do your kids, when they were growing up, you said, Shh. It might not have been quiet, but when Jesus spoke it, you see, he was the creator of the sea. He is the creator of the wind. And it has to obey him. You see, that's who we serve in Jesus Christ. He is the creator of all things, for everything was created for him and in him. 
So you see, Jesus Christ is the creator, so when he says, peace be still, it has to calm down. And we need to realize that we, we need to stop trying to do things on our own, especially when we feel overwhelmed in our life, and let Jesus Christ do it. Let him take care of it. And we have to do what they did. They turned to Jesus. Look at Mark chapter 5. I'll give you another example. This more Mark chapter 5 and verse 25. This lady had a huge storm in her life and she tried to fix things on her own. And she finally came to the realization she couldn't do it. In Mark chapter 5 and verse 25, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? He looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. And Jesus is telling you and I today, our faith. This woman, her faith made her well. It's our faith that gets us through these storms. It's our faith that gives us the peace that we're looking for. Jesus says in John 14, 27, he says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives to you. The world has no peace in it. Amen? Amen. If the world had peace, we wouldn't see what's going on in North Korea. We wouldn't see all the things that are going on in our society today. The world doesn't have, but Jesus says, I'm not giving you the world peace. I'm giving you my peace. He's the only one that can give us peace in the midst of our storms. But yet we want to try to fix it on our own. What is wrong with that picture? Well, you need to cry out to him and say, God, I can't do it. Those of you, I probably shared this when I was here before, but when Brent and I were on the mission field in Quebec, all I could do there was go to language school and learn the language. I couldn't hold a job, and we lived there by faith of someone sending a, a donation to the organization we went through every, every month. If they sent it, we got it. If they didn't send it, we didn't have it. And we, were, we fell short one month, $500. And when you're living by faith, $500 is a lot of money. Try to live in another country. So Mike Brown said, okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? There was nothing I could do except go to the Lord. So I go into our spare bedroom. I begin to pray. And God had led me to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, the latter part of it. It says, put into practice what you have learned, what you've seen. And my mind goes back to Ed Robbins because I sat under his ministry all those years and he taught us that, live by faith. And I said, you're right. God, I, I give up. It's yours. Amanda, what I say Amanda could attest to this, but she wasn't born then. But I can, I can tell you within two days, I received a $500 check. I had a storm in my life because we had bills we had to pay. I had a car payment. I had rent. I had groceries. had all that. We had that in our life, but God supplied it. Another time we were there, we were, kind of, we were shy in funds too, and a, a doctor here in the U.S., sent me a check for $1,000 and said, we're looking for a church. I don't have any place to send my tithe, so I sent it to you, a portion of it, $1,000. So what I'm telling you, I know for a fact that God can do it in the midst of our storms. 
I'll be honest with you, brother. I said, I think I live better by faith. God supplied me my money than I did working a hard job 50 hours a week. Okay, now you say, well, why don't you do that now? Well, Mike's still trying to fix it. But see, in the midst of our storms, we need to let God take control of it and give us the peace that we need. When we go to him and bow before him, he can give us that peace that we need through it. He walks us through it. Because when I come out on the other side, I'm a better person because I walk through that and I know that don't matter what the devil throws at me, I'm going to conquer it. See, that's the mentality. Why shouldn't we? We belong to God. Jesus Christ lives in us, amen? He lives in us, and so if he lives in us, and I'm like him in the sense that he lives within me, it doesn't matter, devil, come on, devil. I don't go out there to do that because Brother Ed told me one time years ago, I talked about, we were talking about demons and all this, and don't go looking for them because you'll find them. I took him at his word too. But trouble comes on its own. We don't have to go looking for it. It comes on its own, but we need to understand that God's right there. He lives in us and he will take care of us. But you see, living on the other, going to the other side doesn't necessarily mean on the other side of our storm. It can also mean to us, we're going to the other side. I'm going to heaven. It don't matter what you do. Let the storm come. Do I like storms? No. Do you like storms? No. But Jesus is there with us. As I said earlier, Jesus was in the boat with them. He was asleep, so he knew they were going to go to the other side. He wasn't worried about it. Why should we? When we put our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ. And the disciples said at the end, when it came down to it, the disciples said, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You see, the writer of Hebrews wrote in 13, chapter 13 and verse 5 that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. Sometimes in our storms we feel like we're all alone. But I'm here to tell you this morning, we're not alone. Jesus is right there with us. He was right there with the disciples in their boat. He's in, if we won't say we travel in the boat in this world until Jesus comes, he's right in our boat too. If we love and trust and serve him. He's right there. All we have to do is turn to him. And the same Jesus who stood and rebuked the wind and said, peace be still, is the same Jesus who is with you and I today. The same one, as I said earlier, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same one is right there with us. The same Jesus who came walking on the sea to the disciples in Matthew chapter 14 when they were in the middle of another storm. And as soon as he stepped into the boat, the wind ceased, the word tells us in Matthew 14. And as soon as you invite Jesus into your storm, peace will come into that and it can calm down in your heart and your spirit. And you can think a lot wiser because he's the same Jesus. You see, in Matthew 14, it says Peter stepped out. Peter really got brave because he, he stepped and said, Lord, if it's you, let me walk on that water. Now, I'm going to paraphrase it. I told you I'm not ordinary. But he said, let me walk on that water with you. So he got up and Jesus said, well, come. Peter got out of the boat, and I'm not sure how he got it. If he just jumped out, if he just do like some of us, we stick our toe over the, over the edge and go, eh, I'm not sure. But he got out in the water and began to walk. And it says, the word tells us in four, Matthew 14, he began to look around, saw all the waves, and just crashing and going, oh. And that's what you and I do in the midst of our storms. We look at the waves. We take our eyes and our focus off of Jesus Christ and we look at the waves. We need to quit looking at the waves and look at Jesus. Because when we look at Jesus, we don't care what's going on around us. But Peter began to look and then he began to sink, the word tells us, into the water and Jesus walked over and just grabbed, reached down and pulled him up. And then they, the word says they walked, both of them, on the water. Walked back to the boat and stepped in the boat. And it says, as soon as Jesus stepped in the boat, I'll repeat myself, but as soon as he stepped in the boat, it ceased. And that's what happens when we keep our focus on Jesus. Spiritually, it will cease. Like I say, that storm may still be out there. But with Jesus, it doesn't matter because I got peace down in my heart because of him. There's an old Southern Gospel song. I, I love it. I sang it in the years past. I know the peace speaker. I thought about singing. I said, no, nah, I don't want to ruin it for everybody, you know. But it says, peace be still. I know the peacemaker. He controls the wind 
and the rain. I know him. I know him. Do you know him this morning? You see, that's what's important. Do we know? I'm not talking about head knowledge. I'm talking about heart. Heart. Do I really know who Jesus Christ is? Is he the same Jesus that's with the disciples in the boat both those times? Is he the same Jesus that fed the 5,000 that didn't lack, they had leftovers? Is he the same Jesus that healed the centurion's daughter? That he goes to Jesus and says, look, I'm not worthy to have you in my house, but if you'll just speak the word, I know my daughter will be healed. And Jesus said, your faith, go home, she's healed. I paraphrase that, but go home, she's healed. He gets home or he gets close to the house and his servants come running up to him and tell him, all excited, telling him, hey, you, you, your daughter's healed. And what did, the, what did the centurion do? He says, what time did, was she healed? Who? What time was she healed? They told her what time of the day he was, she was healed. And he says, that's the exact moment that Jesus Christ says she is healed. Whoa. So, are we serving the same Jesus now that they had then? Yes. And if we are, we got to quit looking at the waves and the wind and look at Jesus Christ. Because he's the one that's going to calm the storm. He created the storm in the literal, in the physical sense, but he might not create our storm, but he can still give us peace in the midst of it. Why else would the writer John put, Jesus said, I will give you my peace. And why would the Hebrews writer put, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, if they didn't mean it? And do we understand it and do we accept it? That he is the same. That is the same Jesus who walked on the earth for three and a half years. For you and I and did all those miracles. And he's still doing, performing miracles today in our lives whether we realize it or not. In things in our lives. He's still doing it. Some of them we may not see or recognize or up front, but he's still doing it. And we need to say, yes. No matter what I face in this life, devil, whatever you throw at me, I'm going to look to Jesus and I'm going to walk through it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy all the time because I'd be lying to you if I did. But I know that with Jesus in it, I can come out on the other side of my problems and my storms. And when I come out, I'm going to be a better person because I, I'll see what Jesus did in that. I knew there was a line I left out on that song, I know him by name. And I saw Stephanie trying to sing it over there before I should have paid attention to her. I know the peace speaker, I know him by name. You see, that's what's important in our life. We need to know him by name. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus. You see, there's something in that name. There's something in that name. When the name of Jesus is spoken, something happens. What I want to ask you this morning, do you know him this morning? Do you truly understand who he is? And are you facing a storm in your life this morning? And he's here to give you that peace that you need in your life if you'll only reach out to him and call his name out. The disciples called his name out. They tried on their own. They were bailing water. I'm sure they were bailing like, like crazy to keep from sinking. And sometimes we feel like we're sinking in the midst of our storm, but if we'll call out to Jesus, he can reach down as he did with Peter in that storm and raise us up. Stand to your feet this morning. If you'll stand to your feet. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't speak loud sometimes. With every head bowed and every eye closed, this is something between you and God. I'm going to ask that question again this morning. Are you in the midst of a storm this morning? 
And if you are, I want you to understand that Jesus Christ is here in this place to give you the peace that you need in this time of need. If that's you this morning, I want you to lift your hand. Not only anybody looking around, I want you to lift your hand to the Lord. Amen. Several hands all over the auditorium. Amen. You can put them down. Now I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith. It's not to point you out. You don't have to tell anybody what the problem is, what the storm is. But if you're serious with God, God, I need your help during this time of, time of my storm. I'm going to ask if you just step out and just come stand across the front. Don't have to say anything to anybody. Don't have to tell me nothing. Don't have to tell anybody anything. But just have people, believers, come and stand behind you and lay their hands up here and we'll pray for you. As these come, I'm going to wait just a moment to make sure everyone that's up here that you needs prayer. And then I want to ask you believers to come stand behind them. See, we're all in this together. I'm nobody special. You're nobody special in the eyes of God. We're all ministers of the gospel and what we do. Now I'm going to ask those of you it will that you feel to, that you come and stand behind these that are standing here this morning. You don't have to ask them anything. God knows what it is, and God can meet their needs. Fathers, those continue to come to stand behind these or standing before you, Father. You know the very need that they have in their life. You see the storm that they're facing. And oh, they may have tried and tried and tried to fix it themselves. But Lord, this morning, they're, they're coming to you and saying, Jesus, I need your help. Just as your disciples did in that boat. Lord, you weren't fearful they were gonna, something was gonna happen to them because you were there. You're with each one of these. Your presence is with them. But Lord, they just got their focus off, off of you and put it onto the storm that's around them. And I pray God today that you reach down right now, Lord, and begin to minister to them in their time of need. You know what it is. You know what has to be done. You know how to do it. And Lord, I pray God today that you just give them that peace that surpasses all understanding in their life right now. And Father, I thank you for those that came forward. I thank you for those who are saying, I give it up to you, Lord. You take it. Get my focus back where it should be on you. And Father, I give you praise for that this morning. And Lord, I ask God that you just be with them, not just today, but tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, and right on through until the storm is gone. Father, every time they, they start to get their focus off of you and look at the ways, and Lord, you'll just remind them by your Holy Spirit, hey, I'm here. I'm here. I haven't changed. I'm still the same Lord and Savior and still the one that controls the wind and the rain. And Lord, I thank you for ministering to each one right now. In Jesus' name. Father, well, I just pray for those that may be here today, Lord, that don't know you, don't even have a clue what I'm talking about. But Lord, I pray for them and I ask God that today, Lord, that you just move by your Holy Spirit in their hearts and their lives, Lord, so that they can find out what this is all about. And Lord, I give you glory for that, Father, and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Brother Danny. Amen. What a word. Truth straight from God. Get a hold of it and let your life be changed. We're going to say a prayer of dismissal. I want you to make your way very quickly down to the fellowship hall and we'll now have food of a different source. All right. Glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Come back. Father, we love you. Thank you for the words that you've given to Mike and that he has given to us. Words of truth, words of life, words of hope. We thank you for them. And we leave here, God, better than we came in because that word has been planted anew in our hearts. Let every one of these that has come forward today, God, let them receive and let them understand that all they got to do is surrender. 
God, you will take us to the other side. And that is victory in itself, and we praise you for it. Thank you for all you're going to do. Father, we go ahead now and bless the food that we're about to eat. Thank you for all those who prepared it. Those, God, that's going to partake of it, bless them, give them strength. And we just remind you, we sure do love you. And thank you for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.